Ducking under high attacks and punishing has become a pretty important part of Mortal Kombat gameplay since MK11, and it continues to be in MK1. You may be watching pro players pull off some crazy ducking punishes and think how the hell did they know to do that? Well, I want to go over a few situations where you can go for a micro duck punish even if you're still kind of a beginner. The easiest high attack to duck and punish is a grab, due to the long recovery, but you can also duck under attack strings that have high attacks in them. For example, you can duck this second kick from Reiko because it's a high attack. Stop blocking after the first kick and then stand and punish as the second flies over your head. If someone starts an attack string with a high jab, and that's very common, you can duck it and then raise up in between the first and second hit and interrupt them with a fast attack of your own. But when do these moments happen in combat? Well, I'm going to introduce you to three of the main times I go for this micro duck punish. The first is using stagger strings. It's common for someone to do an incomplete string and use your fear of the follow-up to do a grab, or start another string for pressure. If they start another high string or go for the grab, neutral ducking and then standing up will punish both of these options. The second is when you do a string that's negative on block, but not punishable. Reiko's 1-2-3 string leaves him only slightly negative at minus 2. This is negative enough for someone to beat me with their down 1, but not much else. My down 1 will beat most other mid options because they just aren't fast enough. After finishing this string, I can do a quick micro duck to pass under a grab or a high jab and now I get a full combo. <laughs> A blocked stagger of forward 1-2 leaves me at minus 6, and I can do the same thing. I may go for a micro duck after a blocked down 1, because my opponent thinks it's their turn to come at me, so they throw out a high attack thinking I'm not going to disrespect the negative frames. However, if I go for any of these options and they come at me with a mid or a low attack, I'll get blown up, and we'll talk about what to do about that in a minute. The final situation is actually during your punishable frames. Let's say you do something super punishable on block. What can you do about it? Nothing. You're punishable. Your opponent is going to punish you. There's no way out. So in this case, I'll just go for a micro duck anyway. If they nail the punish, it won't matter. I was going to get punished anyway. But if they mess up their punish, like they start their jab string too late, or they freeze up and then panic mash a grab, I get to interrupt them. It feels great when it happens. Here's a few moments of micro ducking against a friend of mine in some of our casual matches. I was trying to drill in the importance of using mids in response to negative frames, so I hit him with this a lot until he learned. There's also a form of microducking called microduck OS for option select, and it's a way to use microducks against grabs, but also protect yourself from incoming mids and lows. This is done from the previous situations I mentioned, where you quickly duck without blocking, but instead of immediately throwing out a jab string of your own, you block. This means that you avoid the first frames of the grab, but you block in time for the mid or low option so you could punish the grab or block the mid. You're covering both options with the same input timing. However, you won't get to interrupt a jab string because now you're blocking. It doesn't cover everything. And if your opponent has a really fast mid, you won't be able to do this at all. So yeah, ducking highs and punishing is definitely an important tool to have in your arsenal. It'll get your opponent to stop abusing grabs and jab strings. I hope this has helped you out.